Today we'll introduce you to use EntOpenG for simple troubleshooting tasks. Once you have logged in to your EntOpenG, you basically see this dashboard interface that uh, shows you the main uh, flows that are running on your network. Now, everybody knows it's on network, so everybody knows whether uh, the traffic that it is pet uh, is present on your host or your, or your network or not. However, EntOpenG can help you to figure out whether something strange is happening. EntOpenG can do that in two ways. One, it allows you to see and report uh, visually through the web interface what is happening and therefore you can judge yourself if there is something special that you don't expect. The second option is to set up a threshold for alerts. Let's have a look first of all at the first uh, option, the flows. The active flows shows you uh, what is happening in real time. Usually you can sort them by, by throughput and you can see what is happening. As you can see here there is some Dropbox activity on my machine that is happening and uh, these uh, discounters are uh, increasing over time. In order to reduce the bandwidth we don't increase the counter every second but we uh, have set up a default of five seconds but if you want you can set it to one. This means that uh, we can see uh, what is happening and we can see how the bandwidth is used over time. If you click on the flow itself uh, you can see uh, an overview of the traffic and you can see how your bandwidth is used by this flow. Of course this is not uh, the only way of looking at your traffic but uh, sometimes it's necessary not to look at a single flow but rather to look at a higher view. So you usually go to the host list and you can do the same here on the throughput but looking at the host. As you can see here, uh, sorting the traffic per throughput, it means that you are sorting uh, the traffic according to the top bandwidth users. And in this case, it's, uh, it's my host that uh, is doing some bandwidth uh, and traffic exchange with other remote hosts that are basically these two hosts, because as you can see, the total of this host is this. If you want to verify that, you go on the host, you click on peers, and you will see where is the traffic uh, going. As you can see, the two main hosts that are doing traffic with my host, uh, this Jake, and the other host. Note that the scale here is logarithmic. So it means that in order to give you uh, an idea of the traffic for every host, we have decided not to use a linear scale. So therefore, here you move from 900 kilobyte to 9 megabyte to 95 megabyte, 900, and so on. So these are definitely the two top talkers. And as you can see, if you scroll down, you will see where the traffic being used at the moment. And uh, at the moment we are doing Dropbox and EMAP as uh, a, a exchange. If you click on the, on the protocol, you will see an overview, but if, if you also click on the host itself and click on the flows, you will see what flows are active per a certain host. Uh, if uh, your host uh, is doing some traffic that you don't expect, you should try to investigate it a little bit further. As you can see here, Entop and JSON time reports you unknown as a traffic. This can be reported in, in two uh, cases. Uh, the first case is when Entop and G has not been able to understand the nature of this traffic. I, for instance, uh, this happens when a certain flow has already started, so Entop and G has not seen the, the beginning of the flow. Another case is when this protocol is, is really unknown, so we have no idea of what is happening. So a protocol that is like this is, uh, is unknown might become known later on if we have seen other traffic, but most of the time this means that we have not seen the beginning of the flow and therefore we have no idea of what the protocol could be. Let's now go back. One important thing is to look at the ports. So if you see suspicious port that uh, you don't expect to, to, to see. Okay, this uh, can be a good indication of some suspicious activities. Another thing you should look at is the way you, your host is using the network bandwidth available. So if you see traffic on some protocol you expect, that is fine. If you see traffic on some protocol you don't expect, that is not good. At the moment I am uploading a file to Dropbox, so it's normal to see Dropbox activity here, but sometimes if you 
don't expect this to happen, you should have a, a lower amount of traffic per protocol, and this can also trigger you uh, an alert if you expect uh, a different uh, traffic pattern. However, if you want to do something with the help of NTOPNG, you can set up an alert. You can do that by clicking on this alert sign here, and doing that, you can set uh, some threshold on your traffic. As you can see, the traffic uh, uh, that is recognized by NTOPNG for threshold at the moment uh, includes the number of bytes, the, the number of packets, and two application protocol. You can tell NTOPNG to verify the threshold for crossing or equal or less, okay? Every minute, every five minutes, every hour, or every day. So this means that if you set here uh, in byte, so 5,000 bytes, so if you say generate an alert if in the last minute this host has sent and received more than 5,000 bytes. Or you can do the same in uh, at the five minute level, at hour level, at daily level. This is important because uh, uh, it allows you to uh, delegate and top ng the ability to trigger alerts. So we have here defined a threshold for peer-to-peer -peer protocol where we have included the protocol such as BitTorrent so that if you want to uh, uh, spot the hosts that are doing peer-to-peer uh, -peer traffic, you simply have to put here a reasonable value, I don't know, 1000. So if you say if in the last five minutes a certain host has sent more 1000 byte, one kilobyte, or even you can put it to, to 10k, and save the configuration, and TopNG will generate an alert for the host. In case an alert is generated, you will see a red triangle here happening. And TopNG natively allows you to extend uh, the, the list of alerts for which uh, you know, they can be triggered, can be generated. We'll uh, cover this on a following video. But at the moment, uh, you have to know that uh, uh, by setting specific threshold per specific protocol, according to the various uh, time granularities you can have, it's possible for you to generate alerts that can be used to understand whether the network is going smoothly or whether there is something special that uh, you do not expect. Another thing to consider is the DNS. So inside the DNS protocol, if you see it, that your host has received many errors with respect to the number of positive replies, you should start being suspicious because it means that your host is not able to, to resolve uh, addresses. And this can be common in some cases, so it's normal that uh, sometimes uh, the, the uh, numeric IP is not known. But you should also take into account that uh, when this happens uh, in a very large scale, so let's say if you have uh, more than half of the host not being resolved by the DNS, this can be pretty suspicious. Uh, not just from the security point of view, but mostly from the the health point of view of the network, because it might be that there is something uh, bad that is happening on your network, uh, and that needs your attention, because probably a DNS server has died, or there is a misconfiguration. This to give you an idea of what is happening, and this to also introduce you to uh, basic troubleshooting using NTOP